It all came to be because I know a guy, and I've heard others say, you know, they get you, you see him at a ham fest, you know, like, ah, you're the president, you're the vice president or treasurer. Nice event. Thanks for putting it on, all that sort of thing. You know, and it's like, I wish, I just wish more people would help. You know, it's like, I got to do everything. I'm, I asked the guy, I'll, I won't use his name or call just to keep him, you know, on the clear because he's more active still. Are you going to are you going to re up again and to be the president again? And it was like, no, you know, I I can't do it. It's so much work that I have to do, and just a few people do this work. And so it wasn't me saying, hey, let's start a feeding frenzy about this. I just want to see if this was something you had seen in your clubs. Uh, Steve, you had an interesting perspective on on this, and I think it's a. It, it was a theme throughout the answers. What's what's your thought on a little bit of people doing a lot of the work? And, and that's typical. <clears throat> that happens in a lot of organizations, uh, not just you know radio clubs. It's uh, it goes beyond uh, radio clubs and other organizations, and it's basically you know I'll just kind of put in one under one big tent uh, volunteerism, and. Uh, uh, you're gonna have 10 percent of, of of a group of people no matter what uh organization it is that's going to be really active you'll probably have another 10 percent that is semi-active so if so you'll have anywhere from 10 to 20 percent that are pretty much doing most of the work and then the rest are are kind of hanger honors or some they just can't participate as much as they want to um it just it's just the nature of the beast. It, uh, um, but it's true. About ten percent, uh, whether it's you know radio clubs or any other organizations, is going to be really, really active. That's going to do the majority of the work, and uh, it just uh, that's the way it just falls down, falls out. And it's kind of it's, it is what it is. All right, hold on. One hundred watts and a wire news. This just in. From our community in the chat room, many folks are saying that gummy bears, loaded gummies. Paul said loaded gummies, a pound of gummy bears from James, bare bones bears from Spike. Uh, So for some reason, lots of people believe that the green room must be full of gummies. For Scotty, we would give uh, them that idea. What says you, Scotty? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand what the, where, where that's all coming from. This, it's, a, it's, a, it's all news to me. It's a bizarre um, thing. Scotty, you in any clubs and, and uh, you know, without getting yourself in any kind of trouble, what, what do you see participation like? Uh, well, yeah, I, I do. Um, I am a member of uh, my local club. I don't really go to um, the activities. They do a lot of Aries Racy stuff. In fact, I got an AC, Aries Racy's exercise going on today on the two meter repeater I had to uh, turn my two meter rig off because they were chiming through. Um, but it's always it, in the act in the, in the newsletters and, and the events they have coming up, it's always seems to be the same handful of people that are organizing that are getting out there and participating and, and trying to drum up volunteers to come, come participate and turnouts usually pretty low. And like Steve was saying, it's the you know, same small group of people doing everything for whatever events they have planned for, for the, for the day or for the year. That's kind of rough. Uh, so just to go through, uh, you know, David says something. It's uh, been this way since he started in 1980. Bigger problems nowadays is that people don't want to join organizations at all. What do you make of that, Steve? People just are not interested in even joining camps. Yeah. I mean, that's that's another issue. That's uh, why people don't want to join uh, or they're afraid that if they join, they're going to get roped into doing something, don't want to be, and you know, they want to be that 80% that doesn't want to do anything. They just want to be there. Or, and they're afraid of getting uh, sucked into being part of the 20%. Yeah. But, um, or people's lives are so busy and we got so many distractions that it's, uh, they don't have the time. So I don't know, uh, you know, what the, you know, the end goal is why someone doesn't want to join up. And, uh, and I can understand it. It's, we're busy. Everybody, everybody everybody's super it. busy. Everybody's busy. Super so you busy. hear family, you know, your work. Those are probably the two leading 
uh, reasons, I won't call them excuses, but reasons, and, you know, a lot of great comments here. I, I encourage our community, if you do Facebook at all, you probably don't even have to join or read these, but they're all there. They will be there if you do a search under community questions. All of the questions that we ever talk about have come up, and, and we can't get to all of the answers. Thomas said, that's why I quit. So, you know, this engagement, we, we've got ourselves a little bit of a cycle here, Steve, where, mm-hmm. all right, so we have 10%, just saying 10, 15%. We just give it, even 20%. It's definitely not even half. So we're just going to cover it by saying less people do a lot of the work. And we'll define work as, say, throwing events, say, whether it's field day or it's a cookout or a simplex study or whatever the thing may be, some sort of operating event for the club. A organizing dinner, a event. <clears throat> yeah. organizing an event, you know, whatever, or or just the everyday running of the club, taking yeah. tickets, taking membership, taking keeping track of that, getting people interested in running. This is what we're talking about—the work of it, right? And it's not a guilt trip because, look, I may give money to clubs, but it doesn't mean I'm there solving their problems for them. I'm not setting up in chairs and breaking down the chairs. This is more of a conversation about. You know, we have this issue of cultivating new people into the hobby to start with. And there's potentially a lot of young leaders or new blood leaders type, you know, you don't have to be 25 years old. You could be in your 50s and want to be leading and help out, you know. So I think there's a really uh, balance here that we've got to figure out with leadership in the clubs to recognize some of these younger people, guys usually, and uh, letting them pick up the rope and give some ideas every now and again because it's it's clearly on people's minds and people are quitting it. They're quitting because of it. Well, you may quit leadership because of it. Uh, most people just want to go to the party. You know, they want to go to the breakfast. They want to send out the emails to the uh, or they don't want to send out the emails to the the whole uh, club. You know, that organization coordination, that type of stuff. Um, Mike says, "Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Steve." Go ahead. Well, then the other problem is uh, that comes down to is you have the ones that don't participate um, or act, are not active. They're they're at the meetings and, uh, every month and uh, and <clears throat> they're in that eighty percent group and they sit back and they're you know taking shots from the cheap seat. Well, you know that's the way. we didn't do it that way thirty years ago. And they're just you know stirring it up and. Uh, putting in their two cents and then it's like well if you know if we're not doing it the way it should be why aren't you and then they have an excuse to not be in there they'll criticize but they they won't be part of the solution and um so that's you know discouraging to someone that's trying to do the best for the organization and uh and then get constantly criticized and uh so on top of being doing all this work uh, trying to do what they think is best and feeling like they're not getting support from the senior members of the organization because they're sitting back in the in the cheap seats you know, taking cheap shots at the uh, at the leaders and uh, and then the rest of us are not telling them to shut the hell up and uh, mm-hmm. you know and uh, let these guys you know run it and if you don't like it then we'll vote your ass in and you can uh, run it the way you think it should be but so I mean, there's a a lot of things that are uh, that you know kind of culminates into where we are today. So a good point from um, Patrick in our, our chat here today. He says, "Haven't been a member of a radio club in probably six years." After I moved home after school, I had bigger things to worry about. I still do plenty of public service. So he, you know, he's still out there doing and and volunteering, but he's not a member of the mm-hmm. club. And mm-hmm. and here's a point: if I give money to the club. You know, is that enough? You know what I mean? Like, that's an energy. It's a form of energy. It's a support. And, you know, I hope they can go and work it out and they can use it and that it's helpful. But I'm definitely one that's not super engaged. You know, I, you know, anyway, let me get back to what the people, people think. Tommy says everybody wants to be uh, uh, an EC or AEC, but don't want to do anything. He's got Kilo, Foxtrot, Four, Tango, Charlie. Again, I'm not trying to stir the pot strangely here and uh, get people upset about this whole thing. It's not about us against them or them and them not doing anything. And there's just different interesting perspectives. And uh, there's newer hams who kind of look at things and they're like, oh, 
that kind of stuff. Uh, John says, I guess it depends on how you define the work. We have a very active club. We always have a good size group for field day. We've done winter field day for a few years. We have a group of operators who go out and do POTA activations once a month. We do annual two-day ham fest, two small swap meets a month. That sounds like a good happening active Wow, that's a, a club. lot of work, too. <laughs> he says, of course, there are a number of members that aren't active, but when we put um, out an appeal for people, we always get a good turnout. He's AA4JS, so good for you. That's, that's good. That's great. That's an awesome club. Okay. That's, that's a lot of work. Two, two ham fests a month? Wow. All right. Should we take a question here from David from the chat? I mean, you guys can uh, put a cue in front of it, and we're just going to run it out here. This is a friendly group. It's a community, and when you have community issues, you talk about it. You should talk about mm -hmm. it. It's better than harboring and for, what are they, fostering or festering. That's the word I'm looking for. So David asked, so how do you gently break down the expert in the club that simply isn't willing to teach newer folks his or her expertise, or can you? Need that shrink back respectfully. So how do we get through part, these older part of me heads? Wants to say he wants to not gently break them down because they won't get the subtlety of you know the nudge and say hey you know kind of some of those guys you have to get in get in their grill and uh, and you know tell it like it is. And you know, I, I it, what is sad about things is I've had conversations and people write me and I always welcome it. And I have to be careful what I put back out there because next thing you know, it's going to go out to some other place and get people upset mm -hmm. about something. But, you know, when people start talking about we just have to wait for this older generation to die off, what a sucky thing to have to say. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mm -hmm. I don't feel that way. Like, wow, there must be a way in to sitting down and talking to the kind of, they're called the gatekeepers, they're called the old guard, you know, whatever they're called, the, uh, I call them our elders, our, the mentors that we desperately need and that they're dying off. And I hate that there's a thought out there that we have to wait. We got to wait till these old guys die off before we can get our thing going. And that's sad, isn't that's it? That's a frustration that, you know, newer people have. It's because they're not getting out from us older guys what they what they're craving and uh and the guidance and it's like they finally just they're throwing the towel in and just saying the heck with it and we'll just wait for the old fart to you know move on ben says they've seen the other way around where um <clears throat> where they're willing to teach but no one wants to learn i definitely feel that there's also a side of this and we have mm -hmm. many shades to this hobby and this service that um it's many layers colors whatever you want to you want to say but sometimes the wisdom of the old they can't give it away and that's probably going to depend I've, on where you are and i've ran into that well, quite a few times it's like oh okay all right yeah, you, you don't need and it's not just here in the in the hobby it's in my work profession mm -hmm. it uh you know some of the newer guys the younger guys come in and uh they they kind of like think they know it all and it's you know like some of my kids <laughs> it's like okay all right no problem for complete episodes subscribe where you get podcasts and click the bell here on youtube for features and live streams